So hello people, welcome back to our discussion. So again, ang ating topic is investments in financial instruments. Pero ang focus na lang natin dito is equity instruments kasi tayo ay magsasagot ng illustrative problem. So kung maghahanap kayo ng illustrative problem for debt instruments, so that will be in a separate video. So again, ang focus natin dito ay financial assets in equity instruments. So wag na tayong magpaligoy-ligoy pa. Let's start. So bago muna tayo mag-proceed sa illustrative problem. So ano ang i-discuss natin for this video? So katulad nga ng sinabi ko dun sa discussion natin on concepts. So ang financial assets in equity instruments, so madami ito. So merong mga financial assets in equity instruments na i-discuss sa intermediate accounting 1. Tapos, meron ding mga financial assets in equity instruments na i-discuss din sa ibang subjects. So, since ang subject natin is intermediate accounting 1, so yung cover lang ng subject natin, yung i-discuss natin dito. Ano yung hindi kasali dito? So, kung nakikita nyo itong ating figure dito, so meron tayo ritong apat na classifications ng ating equity instruments. Yung una is yung kapag walang significant influence, control, or joint control. Yung isa is with significant influence. Then, yung another is control. Then, lastly, is yung my joint control. So, ano rito yung i-discuss sa other subjects? So, ito yon Yung my control, tsaka joint control. So, etong dalawang to, hindi natin to i-cover sa video na to. This will be in a separate subject. So, ibig sabihin, ang under intermediate accounting one is etong dalawang na uuna. Yung under ng IFRS 9, tsaka IAS 28 kapag may significant influence. So, ngayon, let's start reading our problem. So, sabi rito, ABC Company provided the following information in relation to its stock investing trading transaction. So, tayo si ABC Company at kung ibabrowse natin yung mga transactions niya from A to F, so, bumili tayo ng ordinary shares. Kaninong ordinary shares? Kay DEF Company. So, ito ay equity instrument of another entity. Kaya ito ay isang financial instrument or financial asset as far as ABC Company is concerned. Kasi for DEF Company, syempre sariling shares ni DEF to. So hindi ito financial instrument as far as DEF Company is concerned. Again, financial instrument lang to sa point of view ni ABC Company. So punta na tayo ngayon sa requirement. Ang sabi sa requirement, let's prepare the journal entries. So, meron tayong apat na independent assumptions. So, una, sabi niya rito, DEF shares are quoted shares and are acquired principally for the purpose of selling or repurchasing it in the near term. The shares were acquired on January 5, 2020 for cash at fair value of DEF shares. So, dito sa number one, so obviously, sabi niya rito, quoted shares. Ibig sabihin, may fair value na available yung DEF ordinary shares. At ano daw ang kanyang purpose? Ano ang business model ni ABC Company for DEF ordinary shares? So ang purpose daw niya is to sell or repurchase it in the near term. Ibig sabihin, ang objective niya is to trade the DEF ordinary shares. So for trading itong ordinary shares na to. So, kung ito ay for trading, ang sabi natin, kapag ang financial assets in equity instruments ay for trading or even not for trading, it should be measured at fair value through profit or loss. So, that will be in number 1. Then, punta tayo sa number 2. Sabi niya rito, DEF shares are quoted shares. So, parehas din siya rito sa number 1. But are not held for trading. So, kung not held for trading siya, pwede pa rin siyang at fair value through profit or loss. Tapos sabi niya rito, But ABC Company cannot exercise significant influence nor control since its ownership is only 10% of DEF's outstanding ordinary shares. The shares were acquired on January 5, 2020 in exchange of equipment that has a fair value of 500,000 pesos and a book value of 480,000 pesos. So, kung titingnan natin dito, sabi niya yung shares ni DEF is not for trading. So, hindi daw siya trade ni ABC Company. 
So, kahit na siya ay not for trading, ang kanyang measurement should be at fair value through profit or loss. Unless si ABC Company i-elect niya yung fair value through other comprehensive income. Which is yun yun last sentence dito. The entity elected the equity investment as a financial asset at fair value through other comprehensive income. So, considering itong last sentence na to, ibig sabihin hindi tayo magpa-financial asset at fair value through profit or loss. Instead, ang gagamitin nating measurement is fair value through other comprehensive income. Then, number three, DEF, ordinary shares, are uncoated equity instruments. Ibig sabihin kung uncoated, walang available na fair value per share kasi wala siyang active market. So, sabi rito, dahil uncoated, ignore the fair value per DEF, ordinary share. So, kung meron tayo rito mga fair value, i-ignore natin yun for the purpose of number three. Then, the shares were acquired on January 5, 2020. In exchange of equipment that has a book value of 480,000 pesos, there is no available fair value for the equipment. So, sa number 3, ang gagamitin natin since siya ay uncoated shares and hindi rin binanggit kung yung shares will give the entity significant influence, control, or joint control. So, ang assumption natin, ito ay... Wala. So, walang significant influence, walang control, and wala ring joint control. So, ang gagamitin nating measurement basis for number 3 is cost method. Then, lastly, number 4, ABC Company holds 25% of DEF's outstanding ordinary shares and can exercise significant influence over the investee whose ordinary shares are quoted in the stock exchange. So, sabi rito, Yung investment ni ABC in DEF ordinary shares will give ABC company, the entity, the significant influence. So, may significant influence siya. So, ibig sabihin, ang gagamitin natin is yung IAS 28 which is equity method. Regardless kung quoted man or unquoted yung shares ni DEF company. Then, the shares were acquired on January 5, 2020 in exchange of equipment that has a book value of 480,000 pesos. There is no available fair value for the equipment. So ngayon, let's start the journal entries. So let's start with case 1. So sabi natin dito sa case 1, ang classification natin for the financial asset in equity instrument will be a financial asset at fair value through profit or loss. That will be case 1. So let's start with letter A. On January 5, 2020, ABC Company purchased 5,000 ordinary shares of DEF Company for 100 pesos per share. The cost paid to broker and agents amounted to 10,000 pesos. And then, ang sabi niya rito sa case 1, the shares were acquired on January 5, 2020 for cash at fair value of DEF shares. So, ibig sabihin, itong 100 pesos na to for letter A, uh, using case 1, itong 100 pesos daw is the fair value of DEF shares on January 5, 2020. So, bago tayo mag-proceed sa ating Excel file, what are the differences when it comes to the initial recognition of financial asset in equity instruments? So, at initial recognition, so when we say initial recognition, ito yung time na in natin o binili natin yung investment. So, ito ay applicable to both debt or equity instrument. So, upon acquisition, sa date kung kailan natin siya binili, kapag ang pinangbili natin is cash, syempre, yung investment natin or yung financial asset will be measured at face value. Siyempre, kasi yung face value ng cash ang gagamitin natin to measure the financial asset. What if yung pinangbayad natin is hindi cash? Ang sabi niya rito, non-cash asset. So, meron tayong hierarchy. So, meron tayong tatlo. So, this will be selected or this will be used in order of priority. So, ang financial asset natin in equity instrument, kapag binili natin yon in exchange, 
for a non-cash asset, so yung financial asset natin in equity instrument must be measured at the fair value of the asset given. So yan yung unang-una mo dapat na i-consider. Meron bang fair value yung asset na binayad mo? Kung meron, yun agad yung amount na gagamitin mo to measure the investment. Pero in case na walang fair value yung asset, so pupunta ka ngayon dito sa second priority. So ang second priority natin is the fair value of the asset received. So check mo kung may fair value yung asset received, which is syempre, in this case, is either the debt or equity instrument. So check mo kung may fair value yung debt instrument or yung equity instrument. So pag meron, kahit wala itong fair value ng asset given, so pwede mong i-record yung investment using the fair value of the asset received. Pero kung wala pa rin itong dalawang fair value, wala kang choice, kundi ang gagamitin mo to record the investment in either debt or equity instrument at the carrying value of the asset given. Kung ano yung asset na pinangbayad mo. Siyempre, hindi ka mawawala nito. Kasi when we say carrying value of asset given, ito yung amount na currently reported sa iyong libro for the non-cash asset given. Then, paano kung lump sum price for multiple securities? Ibig sabihin nito, bumili ka ng more than one instruments, mapadet or equity, for a lump sum price. So, isa lang yung price for all the securities you have purchased. So, since marami kang biniling securities, hindi naman ibig sabihin, ire-record mo yung lahat ng yon using only one account. You need to record those securities separately kung kinakailangan. So, kung kailangan mo siyang i-record separately, kailangan ma-identify mo yung amount na ire-record mo per type of security. E ang problema, lump sum ang price mo. Isa lang ang presyo for all the securities that you have acquired. So, anong gagawin mo? So, ang gagawin natin, kailangan natin i-allocate. So, yung lump sum price, i-allocate natin doon sa mga securities na binili mo. At anong gagamitin nating basis para ma-allocate? So, ang gagamitin nating basis is the relative sales price. So, normally, yung relative sales price, pwede yun yung fair value. Next is transaction cost. So, normally, at acquisition, meron tayong transaction cost. So, ano tong mga transaction cost na to? So, itong mga transaction cost na to ay additional cost. Kasi ang pinaka-cost mo talaga is ito, yung pinangbayad mo. etong pinangbayad mo dito sa taas, which is the acquisition cost, binayad mo to, at ang nakatanggap nito is yung mismong nag issue ng debt or equity instrument. Pero itong transaction cost, binayad mo rin naman to. Pero ang nakatanggap nito ay hindi yung entity na nag issue ng debt or equity instrument. Ang nakakatanggap nito ay ibang party. So, third party ang nakakatanggap nito. So, sino-sino ito? So, normally, nandito kasama yung mga binabayad mo sa mga agents, sa mga brokers, sa mga abogado for legal fees. So, yung mga tao na yon na binabayaran mo, yung, yung ahente, yung broker, hindi sila yung mismong entity na nag issue ng debt or equity instrument. Pero, kailangan mo silang bayaran para ma-process yung iyong investment. So, ang tawag doon ay transaction cost. Pero again, etong acquisition cost, yung binayad mo for cash or non-cash asset, pinabayad mo ito doon sa mismong entity na nag-issue ng debt or equity instrument. At yun yung amount na i-record mo as your investment. So, balik tayo dito sa transaction cost. Ano ang treatment for transaction cost? It depends. So, kapag ang iyong investment, mapadet or equity instrument is classified as a financial asset at fair value through profit or loss. So, paano ang treatment nito? So, ang treatment dyan is to be recorded as an outright expense. So, pagkabayad mo, pagka-incur mo, expense agad. Pero kapag ang financial asset mo, mapadet or equity instrument is hindi at fair value through profit or loss, so, ikakapitalize mo siya. So, pag sinabing ikakapitalize, isasama siya dun sa amount to be recorded in your investment account. So, sabi niya rito, for debt instrument daw, this will cause a decrease in effective interest rate. 
Pero syempre, since ang focus ng discussion natin for this video is equity instrument, so itong part na to, hindi to mag apply sa ating discussion for this video. Kasi nga, tayo ay equity instrument muna. So, let's now go back to our journal entries. Punahin natin yung case 1. So, ang sabi natin sa case 1, the financial asset in equity instrument will be measured at fair value. At yung fair value will be through profit or loss. So, unahin natin gawa ng journal entry, yung letter A, the first transaction. Sabi niya, on January 5, 2020, ABC Company purchased 5,000 ordinary shares of DEF Company for 100 pesos per share. Which is, ang sabi niya dito sa case 1, yung cash paid is the fair value of DEF ordinary shares. Then, meron siyang binayad na cost to brokers and agents amounted to 10,000 pesos. So, for our first transaction, letter A, so ang ating journal entry will be debit trading securities. So, yung account title natin na gagamitin is trading securities. So, pwede rin yung financial asset at fair value through profit or loss. Yun nga lang, medyo mahaba yun. So, eto na lang, trading securities. Kasi when we say trading securities, yung financial asset na yun in equity or debt instrument is held for trading. So, magkano to? So, sabi natin, eto ay 500,000 pesos. So, bakit 500,000 pesos? Kasi 5,000 shares of DEF multiplied by the price per share. So, that is 100 pesos. So, ang total is 500,000 pesos. And this is paid in cash. So, credit cash, 500,000 pesos. And since ang pinangbayad natin is cash, so, syempre, this will be recorded at face value, which is 100 pesos per share. Then, meron din tayong binayad na 10,000 pesos. At sabi natin, yun ay transaction cost. So, ano ang treatment doon? Since ang ating classification ng ating financial asset in equity instrument is at fair value through profit or loss, so, ang transaction cost will be recorded as an expense. So, ang account title na pwede natin gamitin is commission expense for 10,000 pesos, then credit cash, 10,000 pesos. Kasi normally, ang binabay sa mga brokers and agents ay commissions. Pero syempre, since accounting is an art, so you can still use other expense accounts for the transaction cost. Then, let's proceed to the next transaction, letter B. Sabi niya, DEF company declared and paid a 10 pesos cash dividend per share. So, ano ang treatment natin kapag nakatanggap tayo ng dividend from the investee. So, subsequent to the acquisition date, so, ano ang mga accounting treatments natin for our financial assets in equity instruments? So, ito ay comparison ng mga certain transactions that have different accounting treatment per classification of financial assets in equity instruments. So, meron tayo rito ang apat. So, dividend so, specifically, cash and property or script dividend kasi mayroong other types of dividends na hindi ganito ang treatment. Then, the comprehensive income or loss of the investee. And again, when we say investee, ito si DEF company kasi tayo, si ABC company, we are the investor. So, bago tayo mag-proceed, let's discuss first what is a comprehensive income. So, siguro majority sa inyo, ngayon nyo palang na-encounter yung term na comprehensive income. Kasi during basic accounting, usually, ang na-encounter nyo lang na income is the net income or net loss. So, ano yung tinutukoy natin dito ang comprehensive income? So, first, unahin natin yung net income. So, familiar naman tayo na ang net income is nakikita sa income statement. So, ang itsura ng ating income statement ay normally ganito. So, ito ang ating usual presentation ng income statement. So, ang pinaka-dulo, yung naka-double rule is the net income o kaya the net loss na alam rin naman natin na ang net income or net loss ay kinuklose sa retained earnings. So, doon siya sinasara. So, ano yung tinutukoy nating comprehensive income? So, yung comprehensive income 
ay makikita sa Statement of Comprehensive Income. So yung Statement of Comprehensive Income, makikita dito, una is yung net income. So ibig sabihin, kung ano yung makikita sa income statement, usually makikita rin yun sa Statement of Comprehensive Income. At yun yung computation ng ating net income. Yun nga lang, hindi net income ang naka-double rule kasi may idadagdag ka pa. So, ang idadagdag mo is the other comprehensive income. Then, kukuhain mo yung total ng net income at other comprehensive income. So, that constitutes the comprehensive income. So, ibig sabihin, ang composition ng comprehensive income ay dalawa. Meron tayong net income at other comprehensive income. So, ang naka-double rule dito is the comprehensive income. Kaya, ang ating financial statement is the statement of comprehensive income. So, yung statement of comprehensive income na financial statement, gagamitin mo lang naman yan, syempre, kung meron kang sources ng other comprehensive income. Syempre, kung wala ka namang other comprehensive income or OCI, pwede mo na gamitin yung financial statement na income statement. So, hanggang net income ka na lang. Kasi, kung wala ka namang OCI. Pero kung may OCI ka, ang gagamitin mong financial statement is the statement of comprehensive income at ito yung naka-double rule dito. So again, ang composition ng comprehensive income is the net income at other comprehensive income. So ano itong other comprehensive income? So dito sa OCI, dito pumapasok yung mga income and losses na hindi permitted ng standard na maisama sa computation ng net income the profit or loss. Again, when we are talking about the profit or loss, we are referring to the net income. So again, yung OCI, yun yung mga income and losses na hindi permitted ng standards na maisama sa computation ng profit or loss, the net income. So kaya siya ay pinepresent separately from the net income. So dito siya pinepresent immediately below the net income after tax. So, ano usually yung mga income and losses na pwedeng i-classify as OCI? Usually, so ito yung mga income and losses na due to changes in the fair value of an asset or liability. So, valuation. So, yun yung mga usual sources ng income and losses. So, dahil hiniwalay ang other comprehensive income sa net income, ibig sabihin magkahiwalay rin sila kapag kinoklose. So again, yung net income, alam natin kung saan siya kinoklose kasi ang net income ay kinoklose sa retained earnings. But for the other comprehensive income, ikoklose din siya. So ibig sabihin, lilitaw din siya sa statement of financial position sa balance sheet. Pero hindi siya ikoklose sa retained earnings. So saan siya ikoklose? So meron tayong new account na ipepresent sa statement of financial position sa shareholders equity section. At yun yung Cumulative Other Comprehensive Income. Again, ang term natin is Cumulative Other Comprehensive Income kasi yung Other Comprehensive Income na lilitaw dito sa Statement of Comprehensive Income, eto yung OCI for the year. Pero yung lilitaw na Other Comprehensive Income sa Statement of Financial Position, the balance sheet, syempre simula nung nag-recognize ka ng OCI. Kaya nga tinawag na Cumulative. Para siyang retained earnings kasi pag sinabi natin retained earnings, ito yung lahat ng earnings simula nung nag-start yung company, di ba? So, ganun din yung sa cumulative OCI. Ito yung lahat ng OCI since the start na nag-recognize ka ng OCI. Pero, itong cumulative OCI na to, hindi naman to laging mamamalagi dyan sa cumulative OCI na account title sa shareholder equity section. Malilipat at malilipat din yan sa retained earnings. So, kung paano siya malilipat sa retained earnings, so mamaya natin siya i-discuss. Then, yung changes in fair value of the shares of the investee, which is DEF company, at yung gain or loss on sale in case na ibenta natin yung shares natin in DEF. So, since ang case 1 natin is a financial asset at fair value through profit or loss, at yung transaction natin in letter B is a dividend, specifically cash dividend. So, what is our accounting treatment? So, ang accounting treatment daw natin dito is to be recorded as a dividend income. So, kapag nakareceive ng cash, property, or script dividend si investor from the investee at yung kanyang 
classification ng financial asset in equity instrument is FVPL, FBOCI, or cost method. So that will be recorded as a dividend income. So for letter B, so ang entrada natin is debit cash kasi paid na. So ibig sabihin, na-receive na natin yung cash. Pero kung hindi pa na-receive upon date of declaration, so ang debit natin dyan is dividend receivable. Kasi ang dividend income should be recorded when the right to receive the dividend arises. And syempre, kailan ba nagkakaroon ng right sa si investor na ma-receive yung dividend? Syempre, doon yun sa date of declaration. So, syempre kapag date of declaration, not necessarily bayad agad yung dividendo. Kaya, dividend receivable muna. Pero, since sa problem natin, sa letter B, ang sabi, declared and paid. So, it means, nakatanggap na tayo ng cash. Kaya, ang debit natin is cash for 50,000 pesos. Kasi nga, ang ating dividend per share is 10 pesos per share. At meron tayong 5,000 DEF ordinary shares. Then, tayo ay magka-credit ng dividend income. Kasi nga, ang treatment for the cash dividend, property dividend, and script dividend for FVPL is an income to be recorded in the income statement. So, credit, dividend income, also for 50,000 pesos. Then, punta tayo sa letter C. DEF company reported a net income of 250,000 pesos in 2020. The fair value of DEF company's ordinary shares is 105 pesos per share. So, dito sa letter C, my information about the net income generated by DEF company for 2020 at yun ay 250,000 pesos. Then, meron ding information about the fair value or yung bentahan ng ordinary shares ni DEF company. Magkano daw? 105 pesos per share. So, ano ang treatment natin dito? So, yung una sa letter C is yung net income or pwede rin yung comprehensive income or loss. Nino ni investi Again, ang investi natin ay si DEF company. So, syempre, when we say comprehensive income, this already includes the net income. So, sa comprehensive income, kasama na dyan ang net income. So, syempre, yung comprehensive income is either an income or a loss. So, anong treatment nito? Kapag ang iyong financial asset in equity instrument is classified as FVPL, FBOCI, or cost method, so, etong information about the income or loss of the investee will be ignored. So, hindi ito papansinin, so wala kang records na journal entry. Then, how about for the second transaction in letter C? Sabi niya, meron daw dong changes in the fair value of the investee ni DEF company. So, ano ang treatment natin kapag nagbabago ang fair value ng shares ni investee? So, kapag FVPL daw ang classification ng iyong financial asset in equity instrument, any changes in the fair value will be recorded in profit or loss. So, ibig sabihin, magiging part siya ng net income. Pero, kapag ang iyong financial asset in equity instrument ay fair value through OCI, so magre-record ka din ng changes in fair value. Pero, i-record mo siya as part ng other comprehensive income, which is not recycled. So, when we say not recycled, ibig sabihin, hindi na siya maibabalik pa sa PNL. After niyang ma-record sa OCI, ide-diretso na agad siya sa retained earnings. Ibig sabihin, para yung OCI makapunta sa retained earnings, didiretso agad siyang retained earnings. Hindi na siya dadaan pa ng PNL. So, yun yung recycle na tinutukoy natin. Hindi na siya i-re-recycle papuntang PNL kasi didiretso na siya ng retained earnings. Then, for cost method naman, not applicable. Bakit not applicable? Kasi under cost method, ito yung gagamitin nating measurement for the financial asset in equity instrument kung ang shares of stock is uncoated. Ibig sabihin, walang available na fair value. Kaya tayo napilitang gumamit ng cost method. Pero kapag may coated price or fair value, yung shares, require tayong gamitin yung fair value method. Either FVPL or FVOCI. So, ibig sabihin, kapag may fair value, bawal ang cost method. So, since nagkaroon ng change sa fair value, kasi ang fair value natin on January 1, the initial recording is at 100 pesos. 
Pero as of the end of the year 2020, ang fair value na ng shares is already at 105. So merong changes. So i-determine natin kung magkano yung changes. So by completing this schedule. So ang date natin will start on January 5, 2020 at ito yung initial recognition natin nung trading securities. At ang fair value per share kasasabi ko nga kanina on this date is 100 pesos. Then, ang carrying value niya, syempre, is 500,000 pesos. So, ibig sabihin ng carrying value, yan yung amount already carried in the books after we have recorded this amount. And as of this date, syempre, wala pang changes sa fair value. Nagkaroon ng change on December 31, 2020 na ang fair value per share na ni DEF Company on this date is 105 pesos per share. At ang total fair value na niya is at 525,000 pesos. So, dapat yan ay yung maging amount to be carried in the books on December 31, 2020. Kasi nga, kapag ang financial asset in equity instrument is classified as fair value through profit or loss, the trading securities should always be carried in the books at fair value. So, dahil nagkaroon na ng change from 500 naging 525, So, we need to recognize a gain or a loss. Siyempre, magiging gain kung tumaas yung fair value kasi favorable yun sa part natin. Pero loss naman siya kung bababa ang fair value. Which in this case, from January 5 to December 31, tumaas ang fair value ng 5 pesos per share. At ang total niyan is 25,000 pesos. So, this is the amount to be recorded as a gain in profit or loss. So, paano natin inirecord? So, letter C, so ang debit natin is debit trading securities for 25,000 pesos. So, bakit debit trading securities? Kasi kagaya na sinabi ko kanina, kailangan for a financial asset in equity instrument that is classified as FVPL, dapat ito ay to be presented in the statement of financial position at the fair value. So, kung ang fair value is 525,000 pesos, dapat ito ang mag-appear sa balance sheet. Eh, yung account title na trading securities is initially recorded at 500,000 pesos. So, para maging 525, so dapat siyang dagdagan ng 25,000 pesos. At credit tayo ng gain. So, anong klaseng gain? So, credit, unrealized gain from change in the fair value. So, bakit unrealized gain? So, yung gain is considered as unrealized kasi hindi pa naman talaga siya nabebenta. So, ibig sabihin, kaya unrealized kasi fluctuation pa lang yan ng fair value. O marirealize mo lang yung gain kapag binenta mo na siya. So, magkano ang credit? Siyempre, also at 25,000 pesos. Then, for the net income, the information about the net income of DEF company in letter C, Siyempre, since tayo ay FVPL, so ignore yun. Kaya there will be no journal entry for the net income of the investee. So, since ito ay year-end na ng 2020, so ano ang magiging itsura nito pagdating sa financial statements? So, ito ang magiging itsura ng ating income statement and statement of financial position. So, sa statement of financial position, under the current assets section, So, yung trading securities on December 31, 2020, ang amount na mag-a-appear is 525,000 pesos. Then, in the income statement, so ano ang positioning ng ating mga accounts? So, yung dividend income will become part of the net income as well as yung commission expense, deduction siya. Kasi sabi natin, ang transaction cost for a financial asset in either equity or debt instrument as long as it is classified as FVPL, So, that will be recorded as expense. Kaya yung commission expense natin, the transaction cost, syempre, lilitaw sa income statement. And then, yung ating unrealized gain from change in the fair value, sabi natin, yan ay to be recorded in PNL. So, that is part ng net income. And again, pag sinabi natin profit or loss, the PNL, ang tinutukoy natin is yung net income. So, ngayon, let's proceed to letter D. DEF company declared and paid dividend of one unit of smartphone for every 1,000 DEF ordinary shares. So, kung meron tayong 5,000 ordinary shares ni DEF, tapos for every 1,000 daw, meron tayong one unit ng smartphone. Ibig sabihin, meron tayong five units of smartphone na marireceive. Sabi, the fair value of the smartphones at declaration date is 
30,000 pesos per unit. So, ang amount na i-record natin, syempre, the fair value. Tapos, ito ay hindi cash dividend. So, ito ay isang property dividend. Kasi ang marireceive natin na dividend is in kind, which is a smartphone. So, since ito ay property dividend, so similar ang treatment nito as in cash dividend. So, this will be recorded as a dividend income, which is in PNL. So, ang ating journal entry is debit equipment kasi ang mga smartphones are considered as equipment. So, for 150,000 pesos, so yan ay 5 units of smartphones multiplied by the fair value which is 30,000 pesos. Then, credit dividend income. So, 150,000 pesos. Again, yung debit natin is equipment kasi this is already paid. Pero kung hindi pa paid, syempre, ang debit natin is dividends receivable. Then, ngayon, doon tayo sa letter E transaction. DEF company reported a net loss of 50,000 pesos in 2021. So, the fair value of DEF company's ordinary shares is 101 pesos per share. So, ngayon, meron siyang information in letter E that is similar in letter C. So, in letter E, yun nga lang, net loss CDEF company for 50,000 pesos. At meron din siyang fair value as of year end, 101 pesos per share. So, between the two information in letter E, ang ire-record ng natin is yung change in the fair value. Kasi nga, ito ay FVPL. So, yung net loss will be ignored kasi ang ating classification sa ating financial asset in equity instrument is through profit or loss. So, i-record na natin yung change in the fair value. At bago yun, syempre, kailangan natin kumpitin. Magkano ba yung change in the fair value? So, since ito ay second year na, so, ang year end is December 31, 2021. At ang fair value per share dito based on letter E is 101 pesos. So, ang total na niya is 5,000 ordinary shares multiplied by 101. So, that is 505,000 pesos. At ito dapat yung amount na mag-appear sa statement of financial position under the account trading securities. So, magkano ang change? So, ang change is 20,000 pesos. At siya ay negative. Ibig sabihin bumaba. So, yan ay loss. Bakit siya bumaba? Kasi, from the unadjusted value of trading securities na 525,000, bumaba siya. Naging 505,000 pesos. So, ang binaba niya is 20,000 pesos. So, yan ang ating i-record, which is a loss. So, for letter E, Ang entrada natin is debit unrealized loss for 20,000 pesos. So, credit tayo trading securities 20,000 pesos. So, this time yung trading securities na account, credit natin kasi babawasan natin siya ng 20,000 pesos para maging 505,000 pesos. Tapos, yung next information sa letter E which is the net loss of the investee. So, wala tayo dong entrada. So, ngayon, let us proceed to the financial statements. Ano yung mga amounts na mag appear sa financial statements? Sa income statement and statement of financial position. So, for December 31, 2021, syempre, na year end. So, nahin natin ang income statement. So, sa income statement, ito ang makikita. So, yung dividend income, tsaka yung unrealized loss from fair value change. So, again, ang sabi natin, yung dividend income, mapakash, mapaproperty or script dividend, is recorded in profit or loss. At ganun din yung change in the fair value. And again, when we say profit or loss, we are talking about the net income. Tapos, sa statement of financial position, so ang trading securities natin that will appear in the current asset section is 505,000 pesos. This is the year-end balance for 2021. So lastly, so yung letter F transaction, on January 1, 2022, ABC company sold the DEF shares for 110 pesos per share. So ano naman ang accounting treatment natin kapag binenta natin yung financial asset? So yung gain or loss on the sale of the financial asset kapag FVPL ang classification will be recorded in profit or loss. Ibig sabihin again ng profit or loss ay net income. But, if yung financial asset is at OCI, so wala tayong i-record sa profit or loss. Kasi, 
any gain or loss will be recorded directly in retained earnings. Then yung OCI that we have previously recorded due to changes in the fair value will be transferred directly to the retained earnings account. So ito yung tinutukoy nating not recycled kasi yung OCI hindi na pabalik pa sa PNL kasi idediretso agad siya sa retained earnings. Pero kapag cost method, so uh, kapag siya ay binenta, so similar sa FVPL, any gain or loss will be recorded in profit or loss the net income. So i-record na natin yung letter F. So ang letter F again is a sale of the trading securities. So tayo ngayon ay magde-debit ng cash kasi nabenta na natin ito. At magkano ang benta natin? So sabi sa letter F, the sale the selling price is 110 pesos per share. So 5000 shares ito, so multiplied by 110 pesos, so that is 550,000 pesos. Then since nabenta na yung ating financial asset, so tatanggalin na natin dito yung financial asset. So credit trading securities. Magkano? Syempre yung kanyang carrying value. So ang carrying value ng ating trading securities immediately prior to the sale is 505,000 pesos. So ito yung ating ika-credit, 505,000 pesos. Then, syempre, ang benta natin, 550. Pero, ang value ng ating asset na tinanggal is only 505. So, obviously, tayo ay kumita. So, kaya tayo ay mag-credit ng gain on sale of trading securities. At magkano siya? So, syempre, siya ay 45,000 pesos. 550 minus 505. So, etong gain na to is already realized. Hindi na to unrealized. Kasi, bakit siya realized? Kasi, actual sale na to no ating financial asset. Ibig sabihin, masasabi mo lang siyang realized kapag meron ng cash inflow from the increase in the fair value. Pero kahit mag-increase ang fair value at wala namang cash inflow corresponding to the change in fair value, yun pa rin ay considered as unrealized. So ngayon, let us now proceed to case 2. DEF shares are quoted shares for case 2. Pero daw, these are not held for trading. And sabi natin, kahit na yung ordinary shares is not held for trading, ang measurement natin will be fair value through profit or loss. Unless, ang entity elected the fair value through other comprehensive income na measurement which is yun yung case dito sa case 2 na the entity daw elected the equity investment as a financial asset at fair value through other comprehensive income. So, hindi tayo rito mag-fair value through profit or loss. Yung pangalawang fair value method ang ating gagamitin. Kasi nga, the entity elected this measurement basis. So, ibig sabihin, for equity instrument, para magamit yung financial asset at fair value through other comprehensive income, Dapat sabihin ni entity na ito yung measurement basis na kanyang gagamitin at initial recognition. At once elected, this will be irrevocable. So, sabi pa rito sa case 2, sabi niya the entity ABC company cannot exercise significant influence nor control since its ownership is only 10% of DEF's outstanding shares. Then, the shares were acquired on January 5, 2020, same sa case 1, pero daw in exchange of equipment that has a fair value of 500,000 pesos and a book value of 480,000 pesos. So, dito sa case 2, hindi siya binili for cash. Ang ginamit nating pambayad, which is the consideration, is a non-cash asset, which is equipment. So, ano ang rule natin once the consideration or the acquisition is for a non-cash asset? Sabi natin, yung ating debt or equity instrument must be recorded based on the fair value of the asset given. So, in our case, so case 2, ang asset given natin is the equipment which is the non-cash asset. Dapat hanapin natin kung may fair value ba yung equipment which is the asset given. Pero kung halimbawa wala, doon lang tayo magpo-proceed dito sa ating second sa hierarchy, yung fair value ng asset received which is the equity instrument. 
Tapos kung wala pa rin, dito tayo ngayon sa carrying value ng asset given, yung pinakahuli. So check natin kung ano yung information na available for case 2. So, ang sabi natin dito, yung equipment daw, which is the consideration on January 5 for the acquisition of 5,000 DEF ordinary shares, sabi yung equipment has a fair value of 500,000 pesos. So, ibig sabihin, meron tayong available information dun sa first in our hierarchy, which is yung fair value ng asset given. Again, yung asset given is the equipment. At ang fair value niya is 500,000 pesos. So, ibig sabihin, on January 5, 2020, upon acquisition of the DEF ordinary shares, the financial asset in equity instrument must be recorded at 500,000 pesos. So, i-record na natin yung letter A. So, letter A, first transaction natin is debit financial asset at fair value through other comprehensive income. So, that is 500,000 pesos, which is based doon sa fair value ng asset given, which is the equipment. Then, credit tayo ng equipment. Pero, syempre, yung amount to be credited is kung ano yung kanyang carrying value. Ibig sabihin ng carrying value, yun yung amount recorded in the books for the equipment as of the date of acquisition. At magkano daw yun based sa case 2 information, yun daw ay... 480,000 pesos. Kaya, credit tayo, 480,000 pesos. So, meron tayong difference na 20,000 pesos. So, that will be recorded as a gain on exchange. So, credit, 20,000 pesos. So, yung difference natin will be recorded in profit or loss. Then, additional transaction natin for letter A is the transaction cost, which is for the commission to agents and brokers for 10,000 pesos. So, ang sabi natin, for transaction cost, ito ay nire-record as an expense if the financial asset in debt or equity instrument is classified as financial asset at fair value through profit or loss. Kung hindi naman, so ang gagawin natin is ikakapitalize natin yung transaction cost as long as the classification is other than FVPL. So, dito sa case 2, since ang classification natin is no longer fair value through profit or loss, so ibig sabihin yung transaction cost will be capitalized. So, when we say capitalized, it will be added to the cost to be recorded under the account title financial asset at fair value through other comprehensive income. So, ibig sabihin, magiging part siya ng asset account. Hindi siya EA expense. So, ibig sabihin, ang debit natin is debit financial asset at fair value through OCI for 10,000 pesos and credit cash 10,000 pesos. Then, next time transaction for letter B, ang sabi natin meron tayong dividend income. And since yung dividend natin sa letter B transaction is a cash dividend, so ibig sabihin, i-record natin yon as dividend income which is to be recorded in profit or loss. So yung dividend income will apply for FPPL, FVOCI, and cost method classifications. So, to record the next transaction, letter B, so tayo ay magde-debit ng cash for 50,000 pesos. Kasi syempre, 5,000 ordinary shares multiplied by 10 pesos per share na cash dividend. Then, credit dividend income for 50,000 pesos. So, ngayon, punta tayo sa letter C transaction. So, sa letter C na transaction, meron daw net income si DEF company. So, ano ang treatment natin for the net income of the investee kapag ang ating measurement basis is FVOCI? So, ang sabi dito, kapag daw si investee ay may comprehensive income or loss, once na ang measurement basis natin is FVPL, FVOCI, and cost method, so this will be ignored. And additional transaction natin sa letter C is yung change in the fair value of DEF company's ordinary shares. So yung change in the fair value of the investee's ordinary share. Since ang ating classification sa case 2 is financial asset at fair value through OCI, so sabi niya, any changes down in the fair value will be recorded in other comprehensive income. 
at yung other comprehensive income na to will not be recycled. Again, when we say not recycled, ibig sabihin not recycled in profit or loss. So, ngayon, to record the change in the fair value, so kailangan muna natin i-determine kung magkano yung change in the fair value. So, magsa-start tayo doon, syempre, at date of acquisition, which is January 5, 2020, where we recorded the financial asset at fair value through OCI at 510,000 pesos. So, on this date, January 5, 2020, Nirecord natin yung ating asset at 510,000 pesos. So, bakit 510? Kasi meron tayong acquisition cost na 500,000. Ito yung fair value ng equipment plus yung transaction cost na kinapitalize natin. So, kaya ang total acquisition cost is 510,000 pesos on January 5. So, syempre, as of January 5, hindi pa nagbabago yung fair value ng DEF ordinary shares. So, kailan yun magbabago? Siyempre, sa year-end na. So, ang year-end natin is December 31, 2020. At ang sabi niya, at ang fair value ng ating DEF, ordinary shares, on this date has a total of 525,000 pesos. So, yan ang kanyang total fair value on this date, which means that the financial asset at fair value through OCI na account should be presented in the statement of financial position at this amount, 525,000 pesos. So, merong change na nangyari sa fair value. Kasi nga, from 510, naging 525,000 pesos. Ibig sabihin, tumaas yung asset. At kung tumaas yung asset, it simply means na meron tayong gain. So, yung gain na yun, kapag tumaas ang fair value, or loss, in case na mababa yung fair value, will be recorded in other comprehensive income. And this will be presented in the statement of comprehensive income. So, magkano ang lalabas na OCI na makikita sa statement of other comprehensive income for the year ended December 31, 2020? So, syempre, yun yung difference between 525 and 510. So, ang difference nila is 15,000 pesos. So, yan ang lalabas sa Statement of Other Comprehensive Income as Other Comprehensive Income. Ngayon, saan mapupunta ang OCI na nanggagaling sa Statement of Comprehensive Income? So, mapupunta yan sa Statement of Financial Position. So, sa Statement of Financial Position, etong 15,000 pesos na to, meron siyang special place sa balance sheet. At sa ang section ng balance sheet, Nandudoon siya sa shareholders equity section. So, kaya yung OCI hindi lang nakikita sa statement of comprehensive income. Makikita din siya sa statement of financial position. Ang difference lang nila is yung OCI na makikita sa statement of financial position ay cumulative. Unlike dito, yung makikita sa statement of comprehensive income is only for the year. So, ibig sabihin ng for the year, yung gain or loss lang yon for year 2020. Pero pag sinabi natin cumulative, yun yung gain or loss since the start. Kaya nga tinawag siyang cumulative. And since kakastart pa lang natin at yung 2020 is the first year of acquisition of our financial asset, so obviously, yung makikita na OCI sa statement of financial position is also at 15,000 pesos. So ngayon, let's record the transaction, which is the change in the fair value. So sa letter C, dahil tumaas ang fair value, ibig sabihin tataas yung financial asset. Kaya, debit financial asset at fair value through OCI for 15,000 pesos. So after natin i-debit itong 15,000 sa account na financial asset at fair value through OCI, so this account will now be presented as of December 31, 2020 in the Statement of Financial Position at 525,000 pesos. Then, credit tayo syempre ng unrealized gain or loss from change in the fair value. Pero dapat lagyan mo ng label na OCI. Kasi kung hindi ka maglalagay dito ng OCI, ang assumption natin dyan is itong unrealized gain or loss will be presented in profit or loss. Kaya dapat importante na merong OCI 
na term. Then, that is credited for 15,000 pesos. Then, yung next information sa letter C, which is the net income of the investee, ang sabi natin, kapag financial asset at fair value through OCI, that will be ignored. Kaya, there will be no journal entry. So, after we have recorded these transactions for 2020, so, ang next natin is, how will these amounts be presented in the financial statements for 2020? So, unahin natin yung statement of comprehensive income for the year ended December 31, 2020. So, ito ang lilitaw. So, meron tayo rito ang dividend income, which is 50,000 pesos. Ito yung record natin sa letter B transaction. Then, meron tayo rito ang unrealized gain or loss from fair value change in OCI, which is 15,000 pesos. Kung titingnan nyo, yung unrealized gain in OCI na 15,000 pesos is presented below the net income. So, yung net income natin, ito yung PNL. So, ibig sabihin, any amount included in the computation of net income is part of the profit or loss. Kaya kung yung dividend income natin is recorded in profit or loss, ibig sabihin, part siya ng computation ng net income. So, ibig sabihin, once ang gain or loss is to be recorded as an OCI, yun ay hindi kasama sa computation ng net income. Kasi nga, yung OCI is presented below the net income. Tapos, yung amount na naka-double rule, which is the total of the net income, the PNL, and the OCI, so that is our comprehensive income. So, ibig sabihin, ang comprehensive income, dalawa ang composition. Yung net income, which is the PNL, at yung OCI. And again, since ang ating classification is a financial asset at fair value through OCI, any changes in the fair value of the shares of stocks will be recorded in OCI. So, ito yung sa statement of comprehensive income. So, how about in the balance sheet, the statement of financial position? So, ang ating financial asset at fair value through OCI is presented in the non-current asset section of the balance sheet. And ang amount na makikita as of December 31, 2020 is 525,000 pesos. At ito yung amount na naka-base na sa fair value on year-end. Tapos, meron tayong makikita sa shareholder equity section na OCI, which is the cumulative OCI. At magkano? 15,000 pesos. So, ito yun. Yung last column ng ating table. So, ngayon, let us proceed to letter D transaction. So, ang letter D transaction natin is already 2021. So, next year na to. At ang transaction natin is a property dividend. So, similar to sa case 1, syempre. So, ang treatment natin dito is also a dividend income to be recorded in profit or loss. So, for letter D, tayo ay debit equipment kasi yung mga smartphones are considered as an equipment. At magkano siya? Syempre, that will be recorded at fair value of 150,000 pesos. And credit tayo ng dividend income which is 150,000 pesos. Then ngayon, punta tayo sa letter E. So sa letter E, ang transaction naman natin is ganun uli. So meron tayong net income na information about the investee. At meron din tayong fair value on December 31, 2021. So ibig sabihin, ang gagawin natin, since ang ating classification ng financial asset is at fair value through OCI, Ang gagamitin lang natin doon is yung fair value ng ordinary shares kasi kailangan nating i-record yung fluctuation ng fair value. Pero yung net income ni investee, syempre, i-ignore natin yun. So bago natin i-record yung change in the fair value, syempre, kumpitin muna natin magkano yung change. So kumpituhin natin itong table natin. So as of December 31, 2021, ang total fair value ng ating ordinary shares in DEF is 505,000 pesos. Kasi nga, ang ating fair value per share is 101 pesos per share. From 525, which is yung carrying value natin, the unadjusted, kasi as of December 31, 2021, nung hindi pa natin ire-record itong 505, yung ating asset is still recorded at 525. Pero, dapat gagawin na natin siyang 
505,000 pesos. Kasi ito dapat yung amount na dapat makita sa Statement of Financial Position as of year-end ng 2021. So, ibig sabihin, from 5 to 5, gagawin siya ang 505. So, bumaba siya for 2021. So, magkano'y binaba? Siyempre, 5 to 5 minus 505. That is 20,000 pesos. So, decrease yan. Kaya yan ay loss. At yan ay for the year. So, pag sanabing for the year, siyempre, for the year 2021. So, ito yung binagsak ng fair value in 2021. So, ito yung amount na makikita sa Statement of Comprehensive Income in 2021. Eh, magkano ang makikita naman na cumulative OCI sa Statement of Financial Position? And again, pag sinabi kong cumulative, ibig sabihin, simula yun sa start. Yun yung change in the fair value simula nung umpisa. Ano yung umpisa? January 5, 2020. So, ang difference na kukunin natin is yung difference ng 505 at 510. So, ibig sabihin, from 510, bumaba ng 505. At magkano yun? That is negative 5,000, which is a loss. So, yan ay other comprehensive loss. Pero, syempre, ang i-record natin is ito, yung 20,000 pesos. So, again, ito yung makikita sa Statement of Comprehensive Income, yung loss na 20,000. Then, ito yung makikita sa balance sheet. Loss na 5,000 pesos. So, i-record na natin for letter E. So, since bumaba ang fair value, so, debit tayo ng unrealized gain or loss from fair value change, which is, again, lalagyan nyo ng term na OCI or OCL for loss. So, magkano? 20,000 pesos. Then, credit financial asset at fair value through OCI. So, credit siya kasi babawasan natin siya ng magkano? 20,000 pesos. Then, yung additional information in letter E, which is the net income of the investee, yun ay to be ignored. Kasi nga, ang classification natin is FVOCI. So, ngayon, we are done with our journal entries for 2021. So, ang next natin is How will these amounts recorded in 2021 be presented in the financial statements for 2021? So, unahin natin yung statement of comprehensive income. So, sa statement of comprehensive income, so ano lang ang makikita? So, yung dividend income na nirecord natin at 150,000 pesos. Again, ang dividend income is presented as part of the computation of the net income. Kasi nga, yung dividend income is to be recognized in PNL. And again, pag sinabing PNL, we are talking about the net income. Then, sa baba ng net income, makikita yung OCI, which is, in our case, unrealized gain or loss from fair value change. Magkano? 20,000 pesos. So, yun lang ang makikita rito, yung 20,000 pesos, which is the decrease in the fair value for the year 2021. So, ngayon, punta tayo sa balance sheet. Ano ang makikita sa balance sheet? So, sa balance sheet, meron tayo sa non-current asset na financial asset at fair value through OCI na 505,000 pesos. And again, yung 505,000 pesos, ito na yung base sa fair value on December 31, 2021. Tapos, sa shareholders equity section ng balance sheet, makikita natin doon yung cumulative other comprehensive income or loss. So, pwede mong lagyan niya ng loss na 5,000 pesos negative. Kasi yung 5,000 pesos, yan ay yung pinaka-decrease ng fair value since the start. So, ngayon, let us proceed to the last transaction, letter F. So, yung letter F transaction natin is a sales transaction. So, binenta na yung financial asset in letter F. At, Siyempre, kapag binenta yung financial asset, that will result to either gain or loss. So, anong treatment kapag merong gain or loss? So, ang sabi dito, kapag merong gain or loss on the sale of financial asset at ang classification natin is FVOCI, sabi, yung gain or loss will be recorded directly in retained earnings. Ibig sabihin, hindi na tayo magre-record mismo ng account title na gain or loss, which is to be presented in PNL. So, kapag FPOCI, yung gain or loss is diretso na sa RE. Tapos, 
yung OCI, yung cumulative OCI na nakikita natin sa balance sheet, yun daw ay diretsong itatransfer sa RE. Ito yung tinutukoy nating not recycled. etong OCI, yung cumulative OCI sa balance sheet, idediretso na nating iko-close sa RE. In proportion, syempre, doon sa binenta mong financial asset. Since binenta natin lahat ng 5,000 DEF ordinary shares, ibig sabihin, yung buong cumulative OCI, isasara na natin yung lahat sa RE. Kasi yung OCI na account title, tambayan lang yun. Yung other comprehensive income na account, hindi yun nagtatagal. Mapupunta at mapupunta yun sa retained earnings. So, inuulit ko, yung OCI, yung cumulative OCI, ay tambayan lang. Hindi yun nagtatagal dun. Kasi, malilipat at malilipat siya sa retained earnings. Yun nga lang, meron siyang two ways para malipat sa retained earnings. Una is either i-recycle siya or hindi i-recycle. So kapag sinabing hindi i-recycle, ibig sabihin, diretso na yung cumulative OCI na isasara sa retained earnings. Which is, eto yung gagamitin natin dito sa case kapag ang financial asset in equity instrument is FVOCI. At kung siya naman ay i-recycle, kasi may mga cases na i-recycle siya, so ang mangyari is, from cumulative OCI, na nasa balance sheet, marirecycle siya sa PNL, tapos saka siya malilipat sa retained earnings. Kasi alam naman natin na anything na nare-record sa profit or loss, lahat yon ay kinoklose sa retained earnings. So ngayon, i-record na natin yung transaction natin for letter F. So tayo ay mag-debit ng cash for 550,000 pesos kasi nabenta natin siya ng 110 pesos per share for our 5,000 DEF ordinary shares. Tapos, credit tayo ngayon ng financial asset at fair value through OCI. So, magkano ang kanyang carrying value prior to the sale? Siyempre, yun ay recorded at 505. So, kaya credit, 505,000 pesos. At meron tayong difference na 45,000 pesos which is a gain. Pero, this will not be recorded under the account title gain. Instead, sabi natin, this will be recorded in retained earnings. Tapos, since nabenta natin lahat ng DEF ordinary shares, yung buong 5,000 ordinary shares, ibig sabihin, yung buong cumulative OCI na nasa shareholders equity section ng ating balance sheet, isasara na natin yun. At yun ay hindi i-recycle. So, ibig sabihin, diretso na siya sa retained earnings. So, paano siya i-diretso sa retained earnings? Since ito ay loss, ibig sabihin, debit balance to. So, para yan ay maisara sa retained earnings, tayo ay mag-debit retained earnings 5,000 pesos at credit tayo ng cumulative other comprehensive income for 5,000 pesos. So, ngayon we're done with case 2. So, let's proceed to case 3. Ngayon, let us proceed to case 3. So, ang sabi natin kanina, yung DEF ordinary shares dito sa case 3 are uncoated equity instruments. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan nating i-ignore lahat ng fair value ni DEF ordinary share na given dito sa ating problem. Kasi nga, uncoated. Pag sabi kasi yung uncoated, ibig sabihin, walang coated price, which is the fair value. Tapos, dito naman sa case 3, the shares were acquired on January 5, 2020 in exchange of equipment. So, equipment uli ang pinambayad that has a book value of 480,000 pesos. There is no available fair value for the equipment. So, ibig sabihin, Kapag kailangan natin i-record yung ating financial asset in equity instrument, hindi natin magagamit itong first and second sa ating hierarchy. Kasi wala tayong fair value ng equipment, which is the fair value of the asset given. At wala rin tayong fair value ng asset received, which is yung fair value ni DEF ordinary shares. Kasi nga, uncoated siya. So dito tayo babagsak sa carrying value ng asset given or the book value of the equipment. 
at magkano ang book value or carrying value ng equipment that is 480,000 pesos. So, i-record natin ang ating first transaction for cost method. So, again, cost method to kasi uncoded shares. At syempre, cost method ang gagamitin natin kasi wala tayo rito significant influence. So, first transaction letter A. So, ang entrada natin is debit investment in equity for 480,000 pesos and credit equipment for 480,000 pesos which is the book value of the equipment. So, kung titignan mo yung difference ng A natin sa letter A kanina sa case 2, kanina sa case 2 meron tayong gain or loss kasi ang ginamit natin to record the financial asset is yung fair value ng equipment. Pero, nakarecord kasi siya at 480. Kaya may difference tayo kanina. Pero dito, Yung amount na naka-record sa equipment, yun din yung amount to be recorded sa ating financial asset in equity instrument. Kaya walang gain or loss. Tapos, meron tayong transaction cost. And since ito ay hindi FVPL, ibig sabihin yung transaction cost will be capitalized. So, ia-add natin yan dun sa ating asset. At ang asset natin is investment in equity. Kaya, debit investment in equity for 10,000 pesos then credit cash 10,000 pesos so ngayon let's proceed to letter B so ang letter B transaction natin is a dividend cash dividend so sabi natin kapag cost method ang cash dividend property dividend or script dividend is to be recorded as dividend income which is in PNL so kung PNL yun so, ang account title na gagamitin natin is Dividend Income. So, for letter B, so tayo ay debit cash kasi received na to. That is 50,000 pesos. So, 5,000 shares times 10 pesos per share na dividend. Then, credit dividend income, 50,000 pesos. Then, for letter C transaction, so ang letter C natin, merong information about the net income of the investee at meron ding information about the fair value ng ordinary shares ni DEF company. So, anong treatment doon kapag cost method? So, kapag merong comprehensive income or loss investi under cost method, so ignore. So, itong tatlong to pare-pareha sila when it comes to the comprehensive income or loss ni investi pati yung cash, property, and script dividend. Pero dito sa changes in fair value, since uncoated ang cost method, ibig sabihin walang fair value, kaya not applicable. So, ibig sabihin dito sa letter C, wala tayong entrada for the change in fair value kasi nga yan ay not applicable. Tapos, wala rin tayong entrada for the net income ni investi kasi nga tayo ay naka-cost method. So, ngayon, after all these entries, how will these amounts be presented in the financial statements? So, unahin natin ang income statement. So, ito ang itsura ng ating income statement. So, ano lang ang makikita sa income statement? Yung dividend income lang. So, kung titingnan nyo, ang financial statement natin dito is income statement. Unlike dun sa case 2, ang gamit nating financial statement dun is statement of comprehensive income. So, ang tawag mo sa kanya, statement of comprehensive income, kung meron kang idudugtong dito sa baba ni net income na other comprehensive income. So, that's the time you can use yung statement of comprehensive income na financial statement. Pero kung wala ka namang OCI, ang pinaka bottom line mo na is net income, eto na yung double rule. So, pwede mo nang gamitin is yung income statement. Kasi when we say income statement, we are only talking about profit or loss, the PNL. So ngayon, ito lang nakita natin sa income statement, the 50,000 dividend income. Tapos, doon tayo sa balance sheet. Ano ang makikita sa balance sheet? So meron tayong investment in equity which is in the non-current asset section ng balance sheet. At magkano siya? 490,000 pesos. Sa so, nanggaling 490, yung 480 na acquisition cost, yung book value ng equipment plus yung transaction cost. So yung transaction cost dito ay hindi ina-expense. Ina-expense lang ang transaction cost kapag FVPL. So, ngayon, let us proceed to letter D. So, ito ay 2020 transaction. At itong letter D natin na transaction is property dividend. So, again, kapag property dividend for cost method, this will be recorded as dividend income. 
in profit or loss. Kaya ang entrada natin is debit equipment for the smartphones. Ang total is 150,000 pesos. Then credit dividend income for 150,000 pesos. Then, dun tayo ngayon sa letter E. Sa letter E, meron tayong information about the net income and the fair value of the investees shares which is not applicable dito sa cost method kasi nga unquoted shares tayo dito. Kaya wala tayo rito ng entrada for the change in fair value kasi nga not applicable at saka dun sa net loss ni investee. Wala tayong entry. So kung ito lang ang entry natin for 2021, so ano makikita natin sa financial statements? So sa income statement for 2021, so ang tangi makikita is the dividend income. So itong dividend income lang natin ang makikita rito. Then for the balance sheet sa non-current asset section, meron tayong investment in equity at siya ay for 90,000 pesos. So under cost method, in general, hindi nagbabago yung amount ng ating investment in equity na makikita sa balance sheet. So fix siya at the amount of cost, the acquisition cost of 490,000 pesos. Again, in general. Kasi there are still other transactions that might affect the amount to be presented in investment in equity kahit na ang classification natin ay cost method. Pero if we only consider this transaction sa ating problem, so walang effect yan sa cost ng ating investment. Kaya naka 490000 pa rin siya last year tsaka this year. So punta tayo ngayon sa 2022, the letter F transaction. So sa letter F, tayo ay may sale uli. So since cost method na ang ating ginagamit, ano ang treatment sa gain or loss on sale? Kapag cost method, ang sabi niya rito, profit or loss. So ibig sabihin, yung treatment ng gain or loss on sale for cost method is similar sa treatment kapag FVPL. So that will be PNL. So ang entrada natin for letter F is debit cash for 550,000 pesos kasi 110 pesos ang ating Selling price per share. Then, credit investment in equity. Magkano siya naka-record? Ito, 490,000 pesos. Then, may difference na 60,000 pesos. So, yan ay PNL, which is ang account title natin is Gain on Sale of Equity Investment. So, these are the journal entries and financial statement presentation of our investment in equity under cost method. So let us now proceed to the last case, case number four. So ngayon sa case four, ang sabi natin dito, ABC Company holds 25% of DEF's outstanding ordinary shares. At dahil dito, the entity can exercise significant influence over the investee. So, ang sabi natin, once there is a significant influence that the investor can exercise over the investee, yung shares natin, yung financial asset, shall be accounted for as investment in associate using the equity method. So, paano ang recording natin ng mga transactions once na ang ating financial asset is to be accounted for under the equity method? So, katulad ng mga ginawa natin kanina, for FVPL, FVOCI, and cost method. So, ano ang treatment for these transactions under equity method? So, kapag meron tayong dividends na na-receive from the investee, cash, property, or script dividend, ang treatment natin doon is hindi katulad dito sa tatlo. So, yung cash, property, or script dividend na na-receive natin ay hindi ire-record as dividend income. Instead, it will be a reduction in the investment account. So, yun ang ating treatment kapag tayo ay naka-receive ng cash dividend, property dividend, or script dividend. Then, kapag merong comprehensive income or comprehensive loss si investee, this time, merong accounting treatment to kapag ang financial asset is under equity method. Unlike kanina, under FVPL, FVOCI, at cost method, wala. Inignore lang natin ito. Pero under equity method, consider ito sa recording. So kapag income, addition siya to investment. Then kapag loss, deduction naman siya from the investment account. Then kapag may changes in fair value, this time under equity method, ini-ignore yun. So hindi pinapansin kung mayroong 
changes in the fair value of the investee's ordinary shares. Then, sa gain or loss on sale, kapag nabenta natin yung investment natin, that is accounted under equity method, the gain or loss will be recorded in profit or loss. So, yung discussion natin ng equity method dito is hindi ganun ka detalyado kasi that will be in a separate discussion. So, yung mas complex na lessons under equity method will be discussed separately and in more detail. So, yung gagawin lang natin dito is just to account these transactions under equity method para makompare natin yung accounting treatment for these transactions using different classifications for financial assets in equity instruments. So, ngayon, punta na tayo dun sa ating first transaction. Sabi niya, the shares were acquired on January 5, 2020 in exchange of equipment that has a book value of 480,000 pesos. There is no available fair value for the equipment. So, ano ang gagamitin nating amount on January 5 to record the financial asset? So, sabi dito, ang ordinary shares down ni DEF is a quoted shares. Ibig sabihin, may available na fair value. At ang fair value given dito sa letter A is 100 pesos per share. Then, ang information din dito is may book value ang equipment for 80 pero wala siyang fair value. So, at initial recognition, ano ang ating gagamitin? Ang gagamitin natin based dito, since ang ating pagbili ng ordinary shares ay using non-cash asset which is equipment. So, iti-check ulit natin kung meron tayo nitong una, the fair value of asset given or the equipment which is wala sa case 4. So, punta ngayon tayo dito sa second priority which is the fair value of asset received. Ito yung fair value ng DEF ordinary shares. Meron ba? Meron tayong information about the fair value which is 100 pesos per share. So, since merong information about the fair value ng ordinary shares, the asset received, so hindi na natin gagamitin or papansinin yung carrying value ng equipment kasi meron tayo nitong fair value ng ordinary shares the asset received. At again, magkano yung fair value ng ordinary shares? Siya daw ay 100 pesos per share. Kaya ito yung ating basis to record the financial asset in equity instrument. So, for our first journal entry, letter A, so ang account title na gagamitin natin is investment in associate. So, kapag sinabing investment in associate, ito ay financial asset in equity instrument accounted for using equity method kasi meron tayong significant influence. So, magkano siya? So, ang gagamitin natin is fair value ni DEF ordinary shares that is 100 pesos times 5,000 ordinary shares that is 500,000 pesos. Pero ang pinangbayad natin ay equipment. So, credit tayo ng equipment for the amount of carrying value that is 480,000 pesos at may difference siya at yan ay i-record as a gain on exchange for 20,000 pesos. And syempre, sa letter A, meron tayong transaction cost. And since ito ay hindi FVPL, ibig sabihin yung transaction cost will be capitalized. Ang ibig sabihin, yung transaction cost will be added to the financial asset. So, debit tayo investment and associate, 10,000 pesos. Credit cash, 10,000 pesos. Ibig sabihin, in letter A, yung investment and associate natin, at date of purchase, ang acquisition cost is 510,000 pesos. Then, next natin, letter B, meron tayong cash dividend. Ang sabi natin, kapag equity method, cash dividend, property dividend, and script dividend are reductions from the investment in associate account. Kaya, ang entrada natin is debit cash for 5,000 shares times 10 pesos cash dividend per share, that is 50,000 pesos. Then, credit investment in associate 50,000 pesos. Again, since equity method ang ginagamit natin, ang cash, property, and script dividend are not treated as an income. So, let's proceed to letter C. Sa letter C, meron tayong information about the net income and the fair value ng ating ordinary shares ni DEF. Pero, between the two information, ang ating i-consider lang, since equity method to, 
is yung net income ni Investee. Kasi yung net income ni Investee will be recorded as an increase in the investment and associate account. Pero only up to the extent of our share. So, so ang ownership natin is only 25%. So yung increase in the investment and associate account is only up to 25% ng net income ni Investee. At since net income si Investee, ibig sabihin, magiging increase ito sa investment in associate na account. Kaya to increase investment in associate, so tayo ay debit investment in associate for 25% ng net income ni DEF in 2020, which is 25% ng 250,000 pesos. At yun ay 62,500. At ito ay i-record in PNL as an income. So, ang ating account title na gagamitin is Share in Profit of Associate which is also for 62,500. So, remember, yung account title natin Share in Profit of Associate is a PNL account. Ibig sabihin, gagamitin itong account na to sa pag-compute ng net income. Then, for the fair value, if there is a change in the fair value, this will be ignored under the equity method kaya wala tayong journal entry. So after all these amounts are recorded, so what will be the presentation in the financial statements? So unahin natin ang income statement for 2020. So kung makikita nyo dito sa ating income statement for 2020, from all amounts recorded related to the investment in associate, tanging yung share in profit of associate lang ang makikita sa income statement. Kasi nga, this is a PNL account. Then for the balance sheet, ang balance sheet natin will present the investment in associate na account title under the non-current asset section for 522,500. So itong 522,500 is 500 plus 10 minus 50 plus 62,500 pesos. So ngayon, let's proceed to letter D. So yung letter D natin is a 2021 transaction which is a property dividend and since tayo ay under equity method, yung property dividend is not a dividend income. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya mag appear sa PNL. Instead, it will be a reduction from the investment in associate account. Kaya ang entrada natin for letter D is debit equipment for 150,000 pesos, then credit investment in associate for 150,000 pesos. So, naiiba ang equity method when it comes to cash dividend, property dividend, and script dividend. Kasi, hindi siya record as a dividend income. Then, for letter E, meron tayong two information. Again, yun yung fair value ng ordinary shares ni DEF at yung kanyang net loss in 2021. So, this time, net loss si associate, the investee. So, dun muna sa fair value ng equity. So, for the fair value of the ordinary shares of DEF, syempre, ignored. Kaya, wala tayong journal entry. Pero, for the net loss, meron tayong journal entry. Since loss si associate, the investee, which is DEF company, so, ang effect non sa investment in associate na account is a reduction. So, it will decrease the investment in associate na account. At, yun ay to be recorded again in PNL as a loss. So kaya tatandaan nyo, kapag income, that will be an addition to investment, then kapag loss, deduction yun from investment. Kaya to reduce the investment in associate account, credit tayo investment in associate for 12,500. So bakit 12,500? Kasi ang net loss ni DEF ay 50,000 pesos. Siyempre, hindi natin pwedeng i-record yung 50,000 pesos as a decrease kasi ang ating ownership is only 25%. So, dapat ang i-record lang natin is only up to the extent of our ownership which is 25%. So, that is 12,500. 25% ng 50,000 pesos. Then, ang debit natin is share in the loss of associate for 12,500. And etong share in loss of associate is a PNL account. So ibig sabihin kasama to sa computation ng net income. Kasi yung 50,000 pesos ni DEF is a net income which is PNL. Kaya kung yung basis natin ay PNL, yung i-record din natin dito is also a PNL account. So after these entries, so how will this be presented in the financial statements? 
So let's start with the income statement for 2021. So ito ang ating presentation related to the amounts recorded. So, ang makikita lang sa income statement is the share in the loss of associate for 12,500 pesos which is part of the computation of the net income. Then, sa balance sheet naman, ang ating investment in associate in the non-current asset section is now at 360,000 pesos kasi from 522,500, ibabawas natin yung 150 tapos ibabawas uli natin yung 12,500 kaya ang natitira na lang is 360,000 pesos. So ngayon, punta na tayo sa last transaction, letter F. So for letter F, binenta natin ng ating financial asset. So magkano? 110 pesos per share. Kaya tayo ay debit cash for 550,000 pesos and credit natin yung investment in associate at carrying value. Ang carrying value niya prior to the sale is 360,000 pesos. So that is credit, 360,000 pesos. Then, May difference yan na 190,000 pesos credit which is to be recorded in profit or loss. So kapag may gain or loss on sale of the financial asset under equity method, any gain or loss will be recorded in PNL which is part of the computation of net income. So kaya ang account title to be credited is credit gain on sale of investment in associate. So this is our discussion for the differences in the accounting treatments between the four accounting methods for financial assets in equity instruments, namely financial asset at fair value through PNL, financial asset at fair value through OCI, cost method, and investment in associate. So for investment in associate, meron pa ulit tayong additional discussion, separate video discussion, which will be in more detail. Kasi hindi lang ganito ka simple ang investment in associate. Siyempre, may mas mga complex transaction na iba ang treatment specifically under equity method. But for this discussion, so we're done. So class dismissed.